It's the busiest night of the week at the Wanderlust Club. A rare safe space for some here in Mississippi. Where not everyone in the LGBT community finds it easy to be themselves. One of the biggest issues when it comes to transgender people is that society does not understand or is not willing to understand. I hope my music's working. A lot of people, they still deem it to be a choice, but who in their right mind would choose to be targeted? For many in the LGBT community, drag is a way of celebrating identity. Vivacious, powerful, witty, fearless. And that honesty is all the more important here in Mississippi, one of the most conservative and religious states in America, where coming out can take courage, especially for the transgender community. A community that last year was touched by tragedy in what would become one of the deadliest years on record for transgender people in the United States. It was here in January 2017 that Misha Caldwell, 41, an African-American transgender woman, was found murdered by the side of the road. And more than a year on, no one has been charged for Misha's murder. So who killed her? Why was she killed? And why is it so dangerous to be a transgender person in America today? Misha was a popular woman in the community, known for being a talented hairdresser. Her friends describe her as a local legend. She'd been an outgoing, confident woman who gave many of them inspiration and hope. One of her closest friends, Noelle, left the state two years ago. She says she was worn down by the stares and the lack of opportunities. She's now back in Mississippi to reminisce with her old friend, Malaysia. <laughs> As they try to understand what exactly happened to Misha. You look good. She was herself, she was open, she was honest, she was transparent. It was just something about Misha that all of us drew to. It was just the, the realness. The same sweet girl every time I saw her, no matter what situation was going on in the club, no matter what happened in the clubs, whatever, I mean, you know, we, we, we made a partnership with one another. She sounds like a, like a happy, confident person. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. She never steered from who she was. She was like an inspiration for me. A role model. Yeah, a role model. Misha was very strong. Misha was very smart. Misha would fight. She could definitely take care of herself. So when this happened to my sister, I couldn't believe it, I couldn't accept it. Do you remember where you were when you heard about Misha having gone missing and then her body being found? Um, I was in my kitchen cooking dinner and um, my son, uh, he said, well, girl, they got Misha. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. You know, um, just in, in disbelief about the... about the whole situation, that had to have been the hardest thing for me to hear. Because I want to say a week to two weeks prior, she was just sitting on my couch. The coroner said Misha had been shot three times in the neck, chest and arm. Her murder is still being investigated by the local sheriff's office and the FBI. Neither will comment on an ongoing investigation. Her death was the first recorded murder of a transgender person in 2017. The human rights campaign recorded at least 28 killings that year, the worst on record. While Misha's case remains unsolved, LGBT activists here in the South say the reason why it has become so dangerous is due to recent legislation. We will prosecute to the fullest um, anybody who targets the transgender community. I mean, that, that was... In 2016, Mississippi introduced a bill allowing organizations and individuals to refuse to marry, serve or employ an LGBT person based on their religious beliefs. I think a lot of people have felt emboldened uh, by the kind of uh, anti-LGBTQ legislation that we have experienced. So you see a direct line between, from legislation 
to violence. Absolutely. I do believe that uh, not just the legislation, but I, I do believe that the, uh, the, the kind of rhetoric and the, and the course um, conversation, the course talk that, that, that we've heard from, from who, the person who was a candidate and then became our president has, uh, has definitely fueled the fire here in Mississippi. Fill me up, send me up. Fill me up, send me up. Fill me up, send me up. The church here in Mississippi is hugely influential. In Jesus' name we ask you. Amen. Not even righteous. And it was the Baptist church that gave the recent bill its blessing. For those within the LGBT community, they say that this is discrimination and that they feel second-class citizens because of this bill and that they feel fearful of recriminations. We'd be adamantly opposed to any violence against any human being, period. There's no question. It's wrong, wrong, wrong. Has been, will be, always will be. But uh, that does not suggest that we would think that we should compromise on this issue for ourselves. The bill in no way empowers prejudice. The bill in no way empowers hate. The bill simply says that if you have deeply held religious convictions, you have the right to say no. Saturday night in Jackson, Mississippi, and on the outskirts of the city, we're at one of only two LGBT bars in the area. In Mississippi, I would say it is pretty tough because this is like the biggest gay bash in Christianity state ever. Kachara is a young transgender woman currently transitioning. And she explains the struggle of dating and forming relationships in a state where many feel it is now the law to discriminate. I didn't want to hide anymore. Like, I want to be treated like a woman. I want to be treated like a, basically a human being. Like, take me on a date, um, take me out in public. Don't be embarrassed to go out with me. I think I look pretty, pretty feminine. So why are you embarrassed? I had this one guy, he told me that he would kill me if I was to ever told any, tell anybody about our relationship or what we had going on because he didn't want to be out. He has a reputation. That's not something that he wants on his name. Misha's death fits a disturbing pattern. The majority of the 28 transgender people murdered last year were women of color in the South. Their friends believe they were killed by men they know, men who lash out through prejudice at a community that feels it has no laws to protect them. We belong in Mississippi. I mean, this is my home. I've been here almost 40 years. You know, so for me to pack up and leave someplace that I call home because y'all, too ignorant to understand? Or y'all too ignorant to want to gain knowledge and understanding about a community? All I can continue to do is what I'm doing is pressing the issue and pushing the issue and allowing you the opportunity to open up that door of inclusion. Well, since we filmed with Malaysia, the last person speaking there to Kieran Moodley in his report, she has decided to leave Mississippi. She tells us she hopes to find a safer, more affirming environment for her and for her work in transgender education and advocacy.